So what is the psychology behind resentment and things like revenge? It's very interesting. I was talking about this with a client because, you know, he is having these intrusive thoughts he's had, you know, from the experiences that he he had in the past and stuff like this. And we were talking about revenge and resentment and what they mean and what they truly represent within us. And it's very interesting because from my perspective, and it should be usually from anyone's perspective, is that, you know, resentment and revenge are very weak, cowardly mindsets and thus actions to uh, bring into the world because I have an interesting way of looking at this. I think resentment is comprised of two kind of feelings and it's, it's basically an arrogance and jealousy. It's a balance between arrogance and jealousy because usually when you hear of somebody who's resentful or somebody who resents someone else, it's usually because they're jealous. They have something that they don't have that they want. They're, they've achieved a certain place in society that they want but they don't have you know they're very annoyed of someone else and they're and they're resentful of, of this particular individual whatever it may be and this is kind of just like a form of jealousy and i think that's coupled with arrogance because it's as if the person who's resentful believes that they deserve having the same thing as this other person might have that they're resentful towards you know, it's like, well, why don't I have this same thing that this other person has? Why don't I have this certain amount of money? I work really hard at all these things. And then this, this formulation of hate, resentment, and of course, you know, it's coupled with the, the ego being very arrogant, be, not feeling as if that person needs to do anything for themselves to change as well. And I think I think these things are very much coupled together. And I think resentment comes from, from things like that. It's, it's where the individual doesn't really... Uh, believe they need to change or do anything different uh, or that they believe that they're just as fine as they are that they're perfect and they don't need to actually um, do anything different to get the results that they want to see or that they are resentful of other people having that they want so it's it's kind of an interesting way of looking at it and I think that's kind of like the psychology behind it redemption is kind of like the opposite of, of revenge it's like you're redeeming the self so that you can attain these certain things that you want to attain instead of being very jealous and resentful of the person that has the things that you want instead you try and find redemption of the self you try to redeem yourself from maybe your insecurities or your weaknesses or your or the things that you're just not very good at your inferiorities and you work on those things so that you redeem yourself into a a into the world you find redemption so that you can then acclaim these things someone who's very resentful and i think this is the core of it is someone who's very arrogant and someone who doesn't believe they need to change or doesn't believe that they well, not even they don't even self-reflect to bit to even get to the idea that they think they need to change or anything like this that they need to adapt that they need to evolve as people um, i think the resentful individual is someone who sits there and is like okay this is me and let's say something happens to that individual maybe for example maybe they get picked on Let, let's say it's a school kid let's say there's a school kid and they get picked on or whatever or reality uh confronts them straight in the face with a certain force okay and then their insecurities are shown to that individual maybe the bully picks up on this kid and he's like oh yeah, this kid's got insecurities i'm gonna pick on him and let's see what he does about it and then let's say the kid that gets bullied doesn't do anything but the thing is, there's a fundamental lesson in something like that. But what happens over time, the kid develops resentment towards that person because they're like, oh, look, he's he's so much more stronger than me. He can, you know, why does he have to pick on me? The, the, the kid that isn't as big as everyone, the scrawny kid or whatever. What happens there is this, this build up of resentment and hate and a, a desire for revenge and all this type of stuff, and then it builds up and builds up, and then maybe it might explode out through some sort of action that this kid might do. That could be very destructive, right? The thing is, the the lesson that is found within things like that is that it's simply the bully, even though he's obviously not a good person or whatever, but the bully is illustrating and showing you what your insecurities are. And by doing that, you need to be like, okay, these are my insecurities. These are, this, these are the things I need to work on so that I can earn respect from other people, so they don't pick on me, or that they don't talk to me in these certain ways that are disrespectful. Because maybe there's as- attributes of your character that are not res- uh, respectable from other people or whatever, which causes uh, an, att- an attraction of people that want to 
you know, pick on other people or whatever it might be. It might be a situation like that. So, you know, resentment and revenge, the best way to approach them is to, when something like that happens or something that incites some sort of resentment or some sort of hate towards someone, you have to look at yourself, look at yourself in the mirror and think to yourself, okay, what do I need to do to improve on myself so that I get to the place that I want to be at, you know? And I was talking to a client on this, he was saying, you know, what what do I do with regards to these feelings of maybe revenge or resentment and is it my moral obligation to seek out revenge and stuff? And I'm like, no, it's not your moral obligation to do that. Your moral obligation is to redeem yourself, is to think back in the past, okay, introspectively, oh no, retrospectively, what would I choose to become now to defend myself of the of, of the whims of reality that come to me in that form? Whether it maybe someone picked on you, maybe someone verbally abused you, maybe someone physically, you know, was was um, abusive or whatever. What would you do? So oh, I would learn self defense, or I'd learn how to be more articulated with my language, so I can de- defend myself with words and language that are powerful. Or I would do these different things to improve on myself, so I become a stronger person. And then you work in silence as a young man to do those things. That is what it's about. That's kind of redemption of the self, kind of using bad situations or bad situations as situations of growth so that you can become a stronger individual. And you see this with many different things. There's loads of different examples of this. You have the example of the subculture of the incel movement or whatever, where it's like, oh, we hate women or this, we hate we hate women because they don't want to accept us or we don't, we can't get girlfriends or all this type of stupid attitude. And then they push all the blame onto someone else instead of, you know, introspectively looking at what they need to do to improve on themselves and so they have and there's so there's this resentment dynamic that is going on in this weird subcultural movement and and, and then there's emanations of that in many different things and that's kind of basically the the function or the structure of resentment is that there is no process of or ability for that individual to take any responsibility for themselves to improve themselves in any way possible so what i would say in relation to resentment, what it may be be structured of is for the individual, they're very arrogant. They're not very humble to the to reality itself. They don't believe that they can improve upon themselves and their actions. Maybe there's maybe some sort of narcissistic trait going on where they believe that they are the best versions of themselves, even though the world doesn't show that to them because people treat them in different ways and they you know, all of this type of stuff. And then on top of that, there is this sense of jealousy, this constant sense of jealousy, emotional, the emotional side of it is jealousy, the, the, and it, on the egoic side is like arrogance, so that their ego is extremely arrogant, they're very arrogant of the ego, they're not confident, arrogance and, e- and confidence are completely different, you know, the confident individual will take that situation that they are in and they will look at themselves and think, okay, I need to work on this type of thing, okay, I need to make myself into a better person in these situations so that I can become a stronger individual in the face of reality. That is what the confident person would do because they know themselves better. But the arrogant person will not believe that and they will just continue on the frame of mind that they constantly have. And that is the direction they'll go. They will not change. They will not um, adapt to... Uh, improving their on their insecurities or anything like that it's just how it is until they do realize it so resentment's kind of an unconscious thing you know if someone's resentful it's usually like after a period of time they're like oh i was resentful or i did have these kind of thoughts in the back of my mind of jealousy and then they kind of realize that they were resentful but otherwise than that it's it's kind of it's more of an unconscious thing that goes on with people i think and then of course with the emotional side of it it's around jealousy so people are jealous of certain things and it's this kind of combination of arrogance and jealousy which causes this belief that i deserve this why don't i have this right now i've worked so hard to have this why can't i have that or whatever and that could be if anything that could be monetary that could be physical excellence that could be strength that could be in relation to confidence if someone's insecure that could be in relation to so many different things. So that's another question is to think of, you know, what is the honorable thing to do? What is the thing that is respectable to do? The opposite of 
something that is honourable is something that is cowardly. Revenge, resentment is a cowardly way of looking at the world, a cowardly way of reacting emotionally to the world, because someone, of course, who is, let's say, a man, is resentful, or a woman, doesn't really matter, someone who is resentful, there is a, it's a reaction of emotion. They don't really have their emotions in check or under control, and they're being controlled by their emotional responses, and therefore revenge itself is an a, is a emotional response to reality with regards to jealousy and contempt and all of this type of stuff, usually. Which is why I see there being no honour within something like that. The good side of uh, the good side of that would be through redemption and to redeem oneself by taking on the insecurities and confronting them so that you become a stronger person. Revenge is the emotional response of an insecure person who doesn't want to improve upon themselves or develop in any way possible. And you see that anyways, you see that in, if you, if you see any story of someone taking revenge upon someone else in reality, in mythology, in anything, it's usually the person who is a bit neurotic, a bit perplexed, someone who hasn't got it all together, someone who is a bit obsessed and uh, usually deranged in some sort of way. It's not someone who's like, oh yeah, that person's got everything in check and that they're a good person in general. It's usually someone who's, you know, uh, quite out of their mind um, and obsessed with making things right when really what has to be done in that situation is for that person to look within themselves and find redemption through their actions on what they can do for themselves, with themselves, for their future self, and to be on that path of individuation. That's kind of basically what I was talking to with this client, because, you know, he was having issues with intrusive thoughts with regards to his past, and questioning the, you know, what is my moral obligation with regards to things like redemption? I was like, um, with regards to revenge, and I was like, no, just throw that out of the window. It's not the good thing to do. The good thing to do is to find redemption with oneself and to work on yourself in silence so that you build yourself up into something that you are proud of or that your younger self would look up to and be like, oh, I would really want to claim to be someone of that stature or to be someone of that, in, to have that kind of integrity and that confidence and uh, to be someone who is honourable instead of someone who is revengeful and hateful of other people who have things that you want that you can't acclaim to achieving at this moment in time.